Hi everybody, I'm Fabio Mercurio Bloomberg. I'm here at Global Derivatives 2013 with Marco Belloneda. Hi, he's, um, he's a math professor at Grant Institute of New York University. So Marco, it's very nice to have you here. And uh, you know, uh, everybody knows your publications, your work on uh, you know volatility modeling and uh, weighted Monte Carlo and high frequency trading, and recent works on. Uh, uh, you know, on uh, systemic risk for uh, um, central kind of parties, and uh, uh, but the first question is really regarding uh, one thing that you said recently about quants. You mentioned that uh, uh, the era of pure quants is over. What did you mean by that? Well, uh, thank you very much for the interview. I'm like, I think the area of the pure quant is over because we have, well, quantitative uh, theory and quantitative practice in in Wall Street and in banks has evolved already over a period of like about 20 years. And now we're much more, the, the typical quant is much more knowledgeable about data, about market practices. It used to be a mathematician that came typically from academia and that knew very little and and did great things, but now we're, it's another market, you know, it's just like, like technology has taken over the market. Well, you know, quants yes. are now really part of the, of Wall Street, so the pure disconnected quant is no more. We are, we're seeing much more applications, no? No, absolutely. I mean, like, I think uh, uh, quants are required to have, like, uh, you know, uh, different skills now. I mean, everybody yeah. is talking about uh, interpersonal skills, communication skills. Well, that's always uh, good. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, but also maybe different knowledge. I mean, like, uh, uh, maybe knowledge, more knowledge of the market and also maybe uh, more knowledge of the new regulations. And uh, this is something that always quants are kind of uh, afraid to... Uh, um, well, to deal with, you know, I, I think, I think that the, the key thing for about this the, the, is that quants essentially are conceptual people. We're, we're, we are conceptual, conceptual. We come from the sciences. So, if you think of regulations as as rules that govern a financial system, you know, and so you think systemically, then regulations become very easy. I think that the quant, the classic uh, quant function was based in a firm, in a bank, or in a asset management company, and therefore was very kind of unilateral. You were seeing the world through your employer or through the particular activity that you were dedicated to. Now we're mostly Quants can shine, you know, if you like, in this new post-crisis uh, uh, era as people that understand systemic risk. And systemic risk is what it's all about. So the key is to understand the system and, you know, and to understand how, the, how finance is put together. Right. Absolutely. And uh, uh, what are the main quant challenges in that respect, according to you? Um, the main quant, quant challenges in that respect are... I see two that are that are very interesting. One of them is related a bit to your area, which is the area of of uh, bilateral exposure and collateral, and how do we actually look at much more closely the relationships between you know between uh, financial agents, how much, what kind of safeguards do you have to have, what kind of collateral you need to post, and that is certainly an area that uh, that there's a lot of growth with CVS and you know credit valuation adjustments and all that stuff. And the other area, well, of course, there's a classical quantitative trading and so forth, but I think that everything related to the pipes of the financial system is what we need to know more about. Because financial system is a set of rules, and it's a set of pipes, and it's a set of laws, and you need to understand that. Yeah, and it's a set of financing. Finance has gone back to financing. Therefore, if you want to short a stock, you need to know how much you pay, and if you right. you want to borrow money. So all that is now part of the quant function. Whereas before, everything was assumed to be a perfect market. Prices were Brownian. Money was infinite. There were no transaction costs. Now we see that all this matters. So you think there will be still, you know, a nice job for quants? M more, me, much more job for quants. And also, I would say that because of uh, the fact that markets are very integrated, people that are quants that uh, that speak more than one language, uh, or that speak the, you know, one language and also 
can program and can do mathematics and know statistics uh, and know econometrics, you know, definitely have a role to play. It will be in great demand uh, because, uh, you know, it's not that we're going to go back to, you know, to the Stone Age. Uh, right. The thing is, we are going to have to deal with a complex system and, and one should understand uh, what's going on. For example, in my case, my talk in the conference uh, was about uh, central clearing, which is essentially the same thing that people were doing in banks before, just for capital ratios of banks, but now we're doing it through the whole system. And it's very interesting because, you know, I was always curious to see what other banks and other people were trading. Well, if you get that job, you see the books of everybody. So it's actually kind of fun. Of course, you have to be discreet about that. But, uh, you know, so there is a lot of uh, good, uh, there's a lot of good problems out there in the new paradigm. And uh, I think yes. there's going to be much more quant demand that appears. Of course, the the financial engineering, the word financial engineering has acquired, it always had a very pejorative mm -hmm. uh, right. con connotation. I always thought, I could never understand why someone would call himself a financial engineer. Because <laughs> financial engineer smacks of, you know, taking advantage of different financial regulations. But now all this stuff is in front of us. We see it all the time. We know how things are put together. We know the real meaning of the word financial engineering. And now we can be solvers. We can be problem solvers Absolutely. rather than complicators and, you know, things like that. That sometimes, unfortunately, mathematics has complicated things more than it should. Yeah, but sometimes mathematics is also useful. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's extremely <laughs> useful. But what I'm trying to say... No, 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 I understand. What, what I'm, I'm trying to say is that, you know, sometimes... Um, you know, I would tell you something. Being a mathematician, I consider the top of mathematics to be extremely conceptual and simple. Right. To explain the most complicated things. What I don't like is when something is simple and it's made complicated. And this is unfortunately I agree. I agree. where we got caught more than once. You know, this, this complexity that exists naturally in finance and in structure products that mathematics has made even more complex without really a need because if you structured products have been around in one form or another for ages but the mathematization of the market and structured products kind of hurt a little bit the quant function but we're coming back from that I think uh, we're coming quite back fast. even if like a simple products now are kind of complex so yeah. I'm not sure that we can actually model <laughs> all like the, you know the all the risks embedded like in a simple transaction in a simple manner but yeah maybe this is also a challenge for the future as well. So. Yeah. So I think we are running out of time. So it was good to have you here. Thank, Thank you, Marco. You it was great. Thank you.